my fellow makeup enthusiasts, welcome back to my perfectly healthy expression of makeup enthusiasm. My name is Lainey, and I like to talk about all things even marginally related to makeup. I know it's been about a week. Um, I started the semester loving it so far, and the reason I've been away is not because School has been stressful. Actually, this semester is a lot easier than last semester, so I'm hoping that I will be able to keep up with filming at least once a week. The reason I've been away is because I live in the Houston area. The house did flood during Hurricane Harvey in 2017, and the house is not quite finished yet. So there's been some construction going on. It's been too loud to film for the past week. And when I woke up this morning, I didn't really know exactly what kind of video I wanted to make today. I knew that I wanted to film something, so I hopped onto YouTube and I started watching some videos, and most of what I was watching were the new releases videos. And I'm a little bit weird about new releases. A lot of things don't interest me. As much as I love the makeup that I love, the makeup that I don't love, I don't hate, I just have no opinion on it. It barely even penetrates my brain. But a couple of things did manage to get in. And one of those things was the new Becca blush. Um, I call it the bacon blush. And bacon is this one's favorite food, so I thought about her. And so that really appealed to me. I thought, Vivi, do you want a bacon blush? She doesn't care about blush. <laughs> but anyway, I do care about blush. And so when I was Googling this bacon blush, I really wanted to see a swatch. And that gave me the idea for this video. Maybe it's been done before, but I haven't seen it, so I'm gonna talk about it. What makes me gun shy about buying something online and what makes me trigger happy? What makes me like, yep, I'm gonna get it. And we're specifically talking about shopping online, not shopping in stores. The number one thing that makes me hesitant to buy something is when there is no swatch. And this, that's not a swatch. This is not a swatch. This is a swatch, preferably on a light, medium, and dark skin tone. And that's only because I appreciate it when brands and websites are inclusive. I think we all value that. It's not because it helps me at all, because if it's not my skin tone, I really can't get a very good idea of what it's gonna look like on me. But I want to be able to picture it on my face. So I need a good swatch. And when I say swatch, I mean an actual swatch. A picture of broken eyeshadow is not a swatch. That only tells me what the product is going to look like if Lainey gets butterfingers and drops the eyeshadow. Let me do a little demo of why swatches are important. This is a ColourPop single shadow. It's a super shock shadow in the shade Dare. And I don't know if there are pictures on the website of swatches now, but when I ordered it, there were not. See how beautiful it looks? And, and I do use the shadow, but it wasn't what I was expecting. So we're going to do a swatch. This is basically kind of a glitter topper. And, and it's nice for that, but it is not what I was expecting. And if I had seen the swatch, maybe I would have picked a different color or maybe I would have just known what to expect from this because I was a little bit disappointed in this when I first got it and I have hit pan on this and it's just because you have to use a lot to get any kind of payoff. So yeah, a swatch would have been great. And then I'm thinking that's why they didn't show a swatch because it doesn't swatch like you would think it does. So when there's not a swatch, mm, that raises a red flag for me. On the flip side, sometimes a shadow swatches much better than you would think, and it looks much prettier on the eye than you would think. So this is my Lila palette, and it's filthy, and that's because it's loved, so I'm not going to clean it up just to pretend to be fancy. So this shade right here is called Dragon Bite, and this is my favorite shade in the entire palette, and you wouldn't think that I would be drawn to this shade, but let me show you how it performs. Look how interesting that is. And with the duochromes, I think it would be cool if they showed a little mini video. This is such a pretty color and it looks kind of dull just in the palette. So that swatch would have really sold me on this palette if I hadn't already been sold. And let's face it, I ordered this the second it came out. And obviously this pertains to powder products like blush or eyeshadow. So let's talk about lipstick. With lipstick, I really love to see it actually 
on a face. I like to see it in action as much as possible. And I do appreciate it when they do light, medium, and dark, just for the sake of inclusiveness. But I will accept an arm swatch of lipstick. A lipstick smeared on a flat surface is not a swatch. I also find myself getting trust issues when it's clearly the same exact picture of the same exact pair of lips, but different colors. That screams photoshopped. And then with eyeliner, one of my personal favorite makeup products, we are lucky to even get a squiggle on a stark white background. A lot of websites think that it's enough just to show a picture of the tip of the pencil or the tip of the pen. Did that sound dirty? Probably. But sometimes just from looking at the tip, you can't tell if it's super shimmery, if it's sheer, if it's super opaque, how pigmented it is. So I like to see it swatched on skin. And now for some non-swatch related things that make me a little bit gun shy when it comes to purchasing from a website. Um, the first thing would be websites that spam the shit out of my inbox. And the reason that that irritates me is because I just start ignoring them. And maybe I miss out on something really spectacular because I don't, I don't even notice it anymore because it's there. It's like five emails a day. No, that's too much. That makes me actually, meh. it's, it's like when you're dating somebody and they're overzealous and you're still like, I don't know. I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. I like you, but maybe 50 text messages is a little bit much. Not that I'm speaking from experience at all. And continuing with the dating analogies, do you ever get stalkery messages from websites? You know when the internet somehow knows that you got on the website and you looked at this one thing and then magically about an hour later you get an email from the website saying, you checked it out, now check out. Oh my gosh, that, that is so like a stalkery guy. Sweetheart, if I had wanted to buy it, I would have bought it. But I decided not to buy it because you didn't have a fucking swatch. So what does make me trigger happy when it comes to online shopping? Well, in some cases, if the website anthropomorphizes the item that I was looking at and I really did want it, I just maybe I wasn't ready, maybe I was still thinking about it, if it anthropomorphizes the item and says, this is waiting for you, or I think there's a website that shows a picture of the item that you have on your wish list or in your cart, and it says, take me, I'm yours. That kind of thing makes me, makes me want to buy it. But if it's a guilt message, like we've got abandonment issues. I think it's Lush that does that. I'm like, oh, fuck off, I'll just go to the store. Second of all, as irritated as I get when websites try to trick you into spending more money than you really want to spend by offering free shipping at a certain price point, if it's free shipping on any order, I will go ahead and pull the trigger if there are things in my cart or on my wish list that I really do want or that I really do need. And last of all, if I'm just in a really good mood that day, that's when I get really trigger happy with my shopping cart. And I don't know if a website could really do anything to elevate my mood that much to the point where I would pull the trigger on something that I normally wouldn't buy, but I do know that I try to avoid going out shopping, like in the real world shopping, if I'm in a really super good mood because that's when I tend to buy things that I end up regretting. Because I'll be out and I'll look at something that I would never look twice at in a normal mood or especially in a bad mood. But if I'm having one of those days where I'm like, yes, I'm queen of the world, I can rock any look. Neutral palettes, yeah, I would totally rock that. Actually, I've been using a ColourPop neutral palette kind of a lot lately, the She palette. I kind of love that. But of course I use bright pro bright purple eyeliner in conjunction with it so it's not super neutral but I've really been loving that palette lately and it's not a palette that you would think that I would love. Why did I go off on that tangent? I don't know. But yeah, that's when I end up buying things that I regret is when I'm just really crazy happy and I'm like, yeah, I need a lime green lipstick. I'll wear that to work. 
And since I feel like I have a little bit of time left over in this video, let me talk about my recent acquisitions. There are two. I have been a busy gal since the semester began. I finally bought the Milk Kush Lip Balm in Green Dragon, and this is kind of a greenish red dragon because I put it on over my lipstick today. It's very nourishing. Well, I, I say it's nourishing. It feels nourishing. I don't know for a fact that it is, but it is definitely moisturizing. I do put this on before I go to bed at night, and I put it on before. I put my lipstick on, let it settle down a little bit, put the lipstick on, and then put another coat on over it because my lips tend to get dry and it has the coolest closure ever. Ah, I love it. It's got this really strong magnet and it has this really nice click to it when you close it. I'm a sucker for that. What can I say? I like, I like a good closure. And I should also add that it does not interfere with the color of your lipstick, even when you put it on before and after your lipstick. So I really appreciate that. Good job, Milk. And it also smells like mint mojito. I don't really like mojitos, but I like the scent of them. And this stuff, oh, I'm so glad that I bought this. I almost didn't, but Good purchase, Lainey. And I also bought a little purse spray perfume. Uh, this brand is Commodity. The scent is Velvet. Commodity is a really cool brand. It has a wide range of blah, blah, a wide range of scents, and you can mix them together and kind of create your own custom blend. I love that. I have a couple of the little sampler packs, and they're really fun to play around with, but I do find myself just gravitating towards book and moss and now velvet. Velvet smells almost exactly like a fragrance by Maison Margiela. I th think I'm not saying that right, but this brand right here, uh, their replica line, it's called By the Fireplace, and that is one of my absolute favorite scents in the world, but it's really heavy. This is kind of a lighter version of that. I really need to learn how to describe perfumes. This is a sweet, smoky smell. That's that's the best I can give you. It's smoky, it's probably more of a winter scent. Um, I don't care about that, but I do tend to gravitate towards fall and winter scents over spring and summer scents. So yeah, sweet and smoky, but not in an unappealing way. Does that make sense? So that wraps it up for today. As always, thank you so very much for joining me. <laughs> I was gonna see if I could get through the outro talking really quietly because he's so chill until I start talking. And then he's like, let me down, you're too loud, mommy. Obviously I don't have a microphone, so I have to project. It probably doesn't sound like I'm talking super, super loud, but I do have to project in order to get the camera phone to pick up my, my voice. But did you guys notice? The cats are back. I did try using the soft boxes with more of a curtain white background and it was boring. I, I was so bored when I was editing that video. I need the cats. I, I think we'll all agree that the cats make the videos a lot more fun. <laughs> Where'd it go? So that wraps it up for today. As always, thank you so very much for stopping by. Follow me on Instagram. I will follow you back. Throw me a pity like. Give me some encouragement to make some more videos. Very special shout out to you if you are watching this video on the toilet. Be sure to use your poopery. Oh, and stay tuned. I got a shipment notification yesterday saying that my lucky bag from Beautylish is on the way. So that video will be coming hopefully in the very, very near future. So until then, stay adorably obsessed with makeup.